World War Z, An Oral History of the Zombie War is a 2006 zombie apocalyptic horror novel written by American author Max Brooks. The novel is a collection of individual accounts narrated by an agent of the United Nations Post-War Commission, following the devastating global conflict against the zombie plague. Other passages record a decade-long desperate struggle, as experienced by people of various nationalities. The personal accounts also describe the resulting social, political, religious, and environmental changes. World War Z is a follow-up to Brooks' fictitious survival manual The Zombie Survival Guide 2003, but its tone is much more serious. It was inspired by The Good War, an oral history of World War II 1984 by Studs Terkel, and by the zombie films of George A. Romero Brooks used World War Z to comment on government ineptitude and U.S. isolationism, while also examining survivalism and uncertainty. The novel was a commercial hit and was praised by most critics. Its 2007 audiobook version, performed by a full cast including Alan Alda, Mark Hamill, and John Torturo, won an Audi Award. A film with the same name as the novel, directed by Mark Forster and starring Brad Pitt, was released in 2013, and a video game of the same name, based on the movie, was released in 2019 by Sabre Interactive. Topic. Plot Max Brooks, an agent of the United Nations Postwar Commission, travels the world interviewing survivors of the zombie plague 19 years prior. Although the exact origin of the plague is unknown, a young boy from a village in Chongqing, China is identified as the plague's official patient zero. China initiates a military crisis with Taiwan to cover up their attempts to contain the initial outbreaks. The plague spreads to various nations by human trafficking, refugees and the black market organ trade. Initially these nations are able to cover up the smaller outbreaks, until a much larger outbreak in South Africa brings the plague to public attention. As the infection spreads, Israel abandons the Palestinian territories and initiates a nationwide reverse cordon sanitaire, closing its borders to everyone except uninfected Jews and Palestinians, leading to a civil war. The United States does little to prepare because of its overconfidence in its ability to suppress any threat. Although special forces teams contain initial outbreaks, a widespread effort never starts. The U.S. is deprived of political will by brushfire wars and a widely distributed and marketed placebo vaccine, Phalanx, creates a false sense of security. After a journalist reveals that Phalanx does nothing to prevent zombification, a period known as the Great Panic begins. Pakistan and Iran destroy each other in a nuclear war over Pakistani refugees entering Iran. Russia forces a decimation of the military to prevent mutinies. Ukraine gasses numbers of refugees and citizens to weed out the infected. After zombies overrun New York City, the U.S. military sets up a high-profile defense in the nearby city of Yonkers. The Battle of Yonkers is a disaster, modern weapons and tactics prove ineffective against zombies, which have no self-preservation instincts, feel no pain, and can only be stopped if shot through the head. The unprepared and demoralized soldiers are rooted on live television. Other countries suffer similarly disastrous defeats, and human civilization teeters on the brink of collapse. In South Africa, the government adopts a contingency plan drafted by apartheid-era intelligence consultant Paul Riedeke, known as the Riedeke Plan. It calls for the establishment of small sanctuaries, leaving large groups of survivors abandoned in special zones as human baits in order to distract the undead and allowing those within the main safe zone time to regroup and recuperate. 
Governments worldwide assume similar plans. As zombies freeze solid in extreme cold, many civilians in North America flee to the wilderness of northern Canada and the Arctic, where 11 million people die of starvation and hypothermia. Several astronauts stranded aboard the ISS witness the profound environmental impact as most of humanity resorts to burning wood and trash for warmth. After the U.S. government relocates to Hawaii, the military abandons the eastern United States and establishes safe zones west of the Rocky Mountains. All aspects of civilian life are devoted to supporting the war effort. People with skills such as carpentry and construction find themselves more valuable than people with managerial skills. Seven years after the outbreak began, a conference is held off the coast of Honolulu, aboard the 50-year-old USS Saratoga, where the new United Nations headquarters are located. Most of the world's leaders argue that they can outlast the zombie plague if they stay in their safe zones while the zombies rot away. However, the U.S. president argues for going on the offensive, and a general vote results in most countries either voting no or abstain while the remainder decide to attack determined to lead by example the u.s military reinvents itself to meet the specific strategic requirements of fighting the undead backed by a resurgent u.s wartime economy the military begins the three-year-long process of retaking the contiguous united states from both the undead swarms and groups of hostile human survivors other nations that voted to attack go about their own offensives. Russia, its armories badly depleted, resorts to using large stores of World War II era tanks, firearms, flamethrowers, and ammunition, waging a costly offensive against the undead by brute force. The United Kingdom takes a slow but steady approach, taking until five years after the official end of the war to finish clearing London. France, set on restoring its pride and reputation after embarrassments and defeats going back to World War II, charges headlong against the undead, its armed forces displaying extreme valour at an extraordinarily high cost. An unnamed British Army general comments as the war ends that there are enough dead heroes for the end of time. Ten years after the official end of the zombie war, millions of zombies are still active, mainly on the ocean floor or on snow line islands. The United Nations fields a large military force to eliminate them. Cuba has become a democracy and hosts the world's most thriving economy. Tibet is freed from Chinese rule, which in turn becomes a democracy as well, and hosts Lhasa as the world's most populated city. Following a religious revolution, Russia is now an expansionist theocracy and adopts a repopulation program. North Korea is completely empty, with the entire population presumed to have disappeared into underground bunkers or been wiped out in the outbreak. Iceland has been depopulated and remains the world's most heavily infested country. The situation in the British Isles is not entirely clear in the novel. The Pope and members of the British royal family had fled to Ireland specifically Armagh and the Isle of Man, following the military retreat to the Antonine Wall, and now exports oil from a reserve under Windsor Castle where the Queen held out for the war's duration, refusing to flee with her relatives. In France, the Palace of Versailles was the site of a massacre and has been burned to the ground. Military losses were particularly high clearing the catacombs underneath Paris, because the catacombs housed nearly a quarter of a million refugees during the early stages of the war, all of whom became zombies. The Israelis and Palestinians have made peace, and the former occupied territories have been renamed Unified Palestine. Mexico is now known as Aslan. Several countries are described as having revised borders due to the dumping of convicts into infected zones. These convicts rose to command powerful fiefdoms that later became independent states. A so called Pacific continent 
appears to encompass previously uninhabited islands as well as ships rendered immobile due to lack of fuel after the Saudi royal family have destroyed the oil fields in Saudi Arabia. The United Nations fields a large military force to eliminate the remaining zombies from overrun areas, defeat hordes that surface from the ocean floor, and kill frozen zombies before they thaw. Life on Earth is hinted at being brought to near extinction. <laughs> <laughs> development Brooks designed World War Z to follow the laws set up in his earlier work, The Zombie Survival Guide 2003, and explained that the guide may exist in the novel's fictional universe. The zombies of the Zombie Survival Guide are human bodies reanimated by an incurable virus selenum, devoid of intelligence, desirous solely of consuming living flesh, and cannot be killed unless the brain is destroyed. It is said that the undead contain a black, foul pus-like liquid instead of blood. Decomposition will eventually set in, but this process takes longer than for an uninfected body and can be slowed even further by effects such as freezing. Although zombies do not tire and are as strong as the humans they infect, though they appear to be slightly stronger due to lack of normal restraint, they are slow moving and are incapable of planning or cooperation in their attacks. Zombies usually reveal their presence by moaning. Brooks discussed the cultural influences on the novel. He claimed inspiration from The Good War. An Oral History of World War II 1984 by Studs Terkel, stating, Terkel's book is An Oral History of World War II. I read it when I was a teenager and it's sat with me ever since. When I sat down to write World War Z, An Oral History of the Zombie War, I wanted it to be in the vein of an oral history. Brooks also cited renowned zombie film director George A. Romero as an influence and criticized the return of the Living Dead films. They cheapen zombies, make them silly and campy. They've done for the Living Dead what the old Batman TV show did for the Dark Knight. Brooks acknowledged making several references to popular culture in the novel, including one to alien robot franchise Transformers, but declined to identify the others so that readers could discover them independently. Brooks conducted copious research while writing World War Z The technology, politics, economics, culture, and military tactics were based on a variety of reference books and consultations with expert sources. Brooks also cites the U.S. Army as a reference on firearm statistics. Topic Analysis. Topic Social Commentary. Reviewers have noted that Brooks uses World War Z as a platform to criticize government ineptitude, corporate corruption, and human short-sightedness. At one point in the book, a Palestinian refugee living in Kuwait refuses to believe the dead are rising, fearing it is a trick by Israel. Many U.S. characters blame the United States' inability to counter the zombie threat on low confidence in their government due to conflicts in the Middle East. Brooks shows his particular dislike of government bureaucracy. For example, one character in the novel tries to justify lying about the zombie outbreak to avoid widespread panic, while at the same time failing to develop a solution for fear of arousing public ire. He has also criticized U.S. isolationism. Themes Survivalism Survivalism and disaster preparation are prevalent themes in the novel. 
Several interviews, especially those from the United States, focus on policy changes designed to train the surviving U.S. population to fight the zombies and rebuild the country. For example, when cities were made to be as efficient as possible in order to fight the zombies, the plumber could hold a higher status than the former CEO. The ultra-rich hide in their homes, which had been turned into fortified compounds, when they were overwhelmed by others trying to get in, it became a mass slaughter. Throughout the novel, characters demonstrate the physical and mental requirements needed to survive a disaster. Brooks described the large amount of research needed to find optimal methods for fighting a worldwide zombie outbreak. He also pointed out that the U.S. likes the zombie genre because it believes that it can survive anything with the right tools and talent. <laughs> Fear and uncertainty Brooks considers the theme of uncertainty central to the zombie genre. He believes that zombies allow people to deal with their own anxiety about the end of the world. Brooks has expressed a deep fear of zombies. This mindlessness is connected to the context in which Brooks was writing. He declared, At this point we're pretty much living in an irrational time full of human suffering and lacking reason or logic. When asked in a subsequent interview about how he would compare terrorists with zombies, Brooks said, During an appearance on George Strombolopoulos Tonight, Brooks' friend and contemporary novelist Chuck Palahniuk revealed that a major influence on World War Z was the deterioration and death via cancer of Brooks' mother, Anne Bancroft. According to Polarniak, Brooks' attempt to find the right oncologists to treat Bancroft parallels the mission in the novel to find a cure for the zombie plague. Brooks subsequently dedicated the novel to Bancroft. Reception Reviews for the novel have been generally positive. Gilbert Cruz of Entertainment Weekly gave the novel an A rating, commenting that the novel shared with great zombie stories the use of a central metaphor, describing it as an addictively readable oral history. Stephen H. Silver identified Brooks' international focus as the novel's greatest strength and commented favorably on Brooks' ability to create an appreciation for the work needed to combat a global zombie outbreak. Silver's only complaint was with goodbyes. The final chapter in which characters get a chance to give a final closing statement. Silver felt that it was not always apparent who the sundry, undifferentiated characters were. The Eagle described the book as being unlike any other zombie tale, as it is sufficiently terrifying for most readers, and not always in a blood and guts way, either." Keith Phipps of the AV Club stated that the format of the novel makes it difficult for it to develop momentum, but found the novel's individual episodes gripping. Patrick Daly of the Chicago Reader said the novel transcends the silliness of the zombie survival guide by touching on deeper, more somber aspects of the human condition." In his review for Time Out Chicago, Pete Coco declared that, "...b ending horror to the form of alternative history would have been novel in and of itself. Doing so in the mode of Studs Terkel might constitute brilliance." Ron Curry Jr. named World War Z one of his favorite apocalyptic novels and praised Brooks for illustrating the tacit agreement between writer and reader that is essential to the success of stories about the end of the world. Both agree to pretend that this is not fiction, that in fact the horrific tales of a war between humans and zombies are based in reality. Drew Taylor of the Fairfield County Weekly credited World War Z with making zombies more popular in mainstream society. The hardcover version of World War Z spent four weeks on the New York Times bestseller list, peaking at number nine. 
By November 2011, according to Publishers Weekly, World War Z had sold one million copies in all formats. Topic: <inaudible> Audiobook. <inaudible> 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 Random House published an abridged audiobook in 2007, directed by John M. C. Elroy and produced by Dan Zitt, with sound editing by Charles de Montebello. The book is read by Brooks but includes other actors taking on the roles of the many individual characters who are interviewed in the novel. Brooks' previous career in voice acting and voiceover work meant he could recommend a large number of the cast members. On May 14, 2013, Random House Audio released a lengthier audiobook titled World War Z: The Complete Edition, Movie Tie-In Edition, An Oral History of the Zombie War. It contains the entirety of the original abridged audiobook as well as new recordings of each missing segment. A separate, additional audiobook containing only the new recordings not found in the original audiobook was released simultaneously as World War Z, The Lost Files, a companion to the abridged edition. Cast Asterisk The Complete Edition Topic. Reception In her review of the audiobook for Strange Horizons, Siobhan Carroll called the story, "...gripping," and found the listening experience evocative of Orson Welles's famous radio narration of The War of the Worlds, broadcast October 30, 1938. Carroll had mixed opinions on the voice acting, commending it as solid and understated, mercifully free of special effects and scenery chewing overall", but lamenting what she perceived as undue cheeriness on the part of Max Brooks and inauthenticity in Steve Park's Chinese accent. Publishers Weekly also criticized Brooks' narration, but found that the rest of the all-star cast deliver their parts with such fervor and intensity that listeners cannot help but empathize with these characters." In an article in Slate concerning the mistakes producers make on publishing audiobooks, Nate Dimio used World War Z as an example of dramatizations whose full casts contributed to making them great listens, and described the book as a smarter than it has any right to be zombie novel." The World War Z audiobook won the 2007 Audio Award for Multi-Voiced Performance and was nominated for Audiobook of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> Film adaptation In June 2006, Paramount Studios secured the film rights for World War Z for Brad Pitt's production company, Plan B Entertainment, to produce. The screenplay was written by J. Michael Straczynski, with Mark Forster directing and Pitt starring as the main character, UN employee Jerry Lane. Despite being the draft that got the film green lit, Straczynski's script was tossed aside. Production was to begin at the start of 2009, but was delayed while the script was completely rewritten by Matthew Michael Carnahan to set the film in the present, leaving behind much of the book's premise to make it more of an action film. In a 2012 interview, Brooks stated the film now had nothing in common with the novel other than the title. Filming commenced mid-2011, and the film was released in June 2013. Topic. See also List of zombie novels Midway Studios, Newcastle, who worked on a cancelled video game adaptation of the book in 2008